What is happening? Welcome to a very special podcast. Uh, I am joined by one of our prospect experts here, part of our dynasty team here at Pitchos, Trevor Huth. Trevor, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. I love being on this podcast. Yeah, it's, it's only really happened cool one other time, and it's uh, it's going to be fun to be on a podcast and not have you be tearing my decisions apart. So. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, the last time we talked about a draft of yours, it was the uh, the co-managers draft, I believe, um, and that was that was a fun time. I will say. Oh my god! Every time we talk, it seems to come back to just we disagree so much about mock drafts and things. It's fantastic. I love it. Well, I'd rather that's draft part my of, way. you know, and I think that's a prime example of what Pitch is about. It's not about the takes, right? It's about the discussion, and your discussions are some of the most fun we have around here. And part of the reason why I have you today is, of course we've had a lot of discussions about prospects. You know, I'm not a huge prospects guy. You are. And this is a dream podcast we've had for a long time where you have brought 23 videos of prospect pitchers. And what we're going to do today, we're doing this on the live stream via Twitch and on Periscope. Um, that is through Twitter as well. Uh, we are going to be watching these videos of all these pitchers. And I'm just going to sit here and judge them <laughs> in a super small sample size. Uh, you can see this video later on on YouTube. We're going to put it on the Pitcherlist channel there, youtube.com slash Pitcherlist. Um, you can see it as a video also on our Twitch at twitch.tv slash Pitcherlist as well. Um, but so I'm really, really looking forward to this. This is obviously live as well, so it's going to be super fun. Uh, before I get to that really quickly, uh, you might notice that I have a shaved head. This is because all of you voted Pitcherlist as the number one fantasy baseball podcast on uh, through Baseball Pod. So really, thank you all so much. I'm a man of my word and shaved my head over the weekend. Hopefully it was an entertaining live stream. Really, thank you all for that. And if you tune in on Thursday, uh, we're doing a live on the corner podcast. That's Fast and I are doing one at six o'clock Eastern time on Thursday. We have a major announcement. We're going to do it right at the beginning of the podcast. And I cannot wait for this. Trevor knows what it is. We were just talking about beforehand how excited we are about it. Um, I, I, I know that you guys will be pumped as well. So Make sure that you uh, you put aside some time to at least be there at six o'clock for that announcement. But and all of that aside, Trevor, let's let's watch some pictures. You've named these um, these video files one through twenty three. So I don't know in case I like read maybe the back of their you know their jersey. I might know, but I don't I don't really know these guys at all. Yeah, and that's going to be the fun of it. Um, I know this. You know, it was so fun when uh, we were doing the game of the day stream, and I was doing the twenty nineteen. Uh, futures game and you just popped on and going on the voice channel and just giving us all these thoughts and saying hey do i care about this guy or not i mean it was it was just so much fun so i'm really happy we're going to get to do this oh know, man please please tell me you got six of sanchez on here that would be uh that, um, he was the one that like it was him and patino who were like <laughs> oh those guys are the best so i can't excited. can't tell you anything um but i do want to thank um oh god i'm gonna botch your name here so bad but i want to thank andy yeah. Patton yes. and shelly oh Birth god trade. First, see, I do a podcast. Like with her. I do a complete separate podcast with her. I should know how to say her name. But... <laughs> you, wait, you're a host with her now, right? You, you guys, yes. where do you guys do that? Uh, that is with Over the Monster, which is the uh, uh, SB Nation site for the um, Red Sox. We dropped our first episode um, last week, I think it was, or the week before, and we'll have our next one coming up. We're going to record it here this week, so sweet. Uh, that's going to be awesome. Sure. Yeah, but um, so a big thank you to them for helping me get some of these videos together. Um, so yeah, pretty much the idea here is that it's, uh, we used MLB pipelines, top 100. Um, if a pitcher had reached the majors, we just said, no, Nick's probably seen it. Right. Yeah. I've seen it. Um, <laughs> so, so these guys are guys who haven't reached the majors yet. We have all but six of them. Um, and the six are either cause I, we couldn't find video. I completely forgot to put them on our sheet, which happened in one case and, uh, or, or, just kind of ran out of time, but we have a solid amount of these, a lot of the really good ones. Uh, so I'm really excited for this. And what's going to be more exciting than Nick watching the products is Nick looking at the camera angles oh, no. that MILB TV gives us. <laughs> it's going to be the I'm best. Spoiled. I'm spoiled by like the Rays and the, and the Braves <laughs> and so on. Um, by the way, of course, when you said the top 100 prospects, I just thought that that'd be the top 100 pitchers. And of course not. It's all, it's like 70, 30 hitters, the pitchers. So let's get straight to it. Uh, I'm sure people want to see some, some videos. So let's go to the first one right here. Obviously he's not number 19. It's the person that's going to be pitching to him. So let's do it. All right. So we've covered that. Nick knows the pitchers are the ones without the bats. That's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Who we got here? Oh, I know this one. Oh yeah, this is this is Brady Singer. Okay, those are those are very weird mechanics. And um, 
the reason that we are not into mechanics like this generally is it's often hard to repeat. And I don't like how quick it is. Um, generally, mechanics that rely, like if you're super fast with your delivery, that means that your timing has to be even, you know, even quicker and more consistent. Like if you have a longer motion, then even if you are not the same time, you still have more time to get to certain point, points in it and then and then stay uh, locked in with consistency. So that's actually, I kind of like that it froze there for a second. So you can really see uh, where everything was during the delivery. I don't know. It, it's kind of hard to see. Um, I imagine this is all two seamers. He looks like a guy that would be like a crafty two seamer. Yeah. And um, my favorite part of this video, just to jump in, is the fact that it's so much clearer when he's not behind him. <laughs> the video. Yeah, this is also like a massive fog. That's a really nice breaking ball, though. Um, I imagine that was a slider trying to get down at ankles, and that's actually where it ended up. Um, I, I'm fine with the, like the, the starting point with this here, and he's getting to the spots he needs to. Like glove is up, arm is getting up somewhat fast. Um, I mean, I've seen guys stay flatter for longer. Um, not a huge fan of these mechanics. I mean, if it is a two seam heavy thing with a slider, not my favorite guy. Uh, that's that's the quick hit on Brady Singer right there. You're right. He is a two seam guy. Um, okay, he so gets a lot of nice arm side run. Uh, at least that's what we saw, especially in the 2019 Futures game. We had a decent angle. So uh, mm. there's that at bat. And so where do you think he would be in terms of you know that group of pitchers in the top 100? Oh man, uh, I I mean I okay. I'm not completely dumb. Like I've heard Brady Singer's name a lot. So I imagine he's in the top 10, if not like the top five. Um, I, looking at that one breaking bomb, again, we just looked at one at bat where he struck out a guy swing, or looking. Um, it looked like it was also a two-seamer that started in and then came back over. So I uh, so imagine that's a lot of two-seam movement. Um, but I mean, I guess he's in the top, I guess like four is my guess of pitchers. He is the uh, 16th pitcher, if my math is correct, 59th overall in the top 100. Awesome. <laughs> good, good, good. I, I gotta stop like guessing based on that then. Okay, because two. I mean, essentially for fantasy purposes, I don't want to go after two seam heavy guys. I think that relying on control and command in that way is kind of a questionable thing um, that doesn't always play. Like the only example I can think of a guy that actually made that work um, when coming to the bigs is Mike Soroka. That's really like the only one for the most part. I mean, you could say Chris Paddock too. But that's also a four seamer. I feel like four seamers can be more consistent with it than you are as a two seamer guy. So um, that was a good breaking ball. I, just, I saw just one guy. This is what I pictured your face being when you got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's pointing at some some girl in the stands who has yeah she's getting like a stink face right now. Um, that's probably right. That, that's got to be it. Okay, we're moving on to picture number two here. Who we got? Well, I don't know yet. Yeah, maybe I won't know. That's still a hitter. There we go. Let's see. Okay, so we have a lefty. Um, someone named Marquez. Okay, so I mean that was fine from that brief thing. I guess he's with the Cubs. He's got some Cub thing on his jersey. Let's see. Okay, so I don't like how much he's standing up tall, but that's actually kind of smooth mechanics. Um, pretty pretty even keel throughout. Very straight towards it. I mean, he's not getting as far as out as possible, not like as much of a flat back as I would want. Um, so that to me feels like a he needs to get a little more flexible with his bottom half, or b just needs to use his bottom half more. Uh, but I mean, I just saw two very quick glimpses. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I, honestly, I'm alright with it. He's a bit of a slinger, um, which makes me wonder if his command is going to be too consistent. I really want to see if he's going to follow up with the changeup now. Came back inside. It was supposed to be away, but jammed him because he's lucky and it's a minors. Um, way to hustle, Marquez. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I yeah, he totally got him. Um, I mean, from those two pitches, not too excited because A is slinger and B didn't really look like um, with the with the delivery that would be always consistent going towards it. like with the flat back like pushes me off a little bit. But we'll see with the secondary stuff, not to mention we saw it go all the way inside, which is generally the kind of command that you miss on. You don't miss high and low being a sling. You miss um, inside out. And to see that he was away and then he came back in was a bit surprising. So, all right, that's the video we've got on Marquez. Uh, who is he? What, what's his name? What's the full Bra name? Uh, Braylon Marquez. Braylon Marquez. He is uh, 
I would say probably he would be like of the top 100 around like 23, 27, something like that. Uh, of the pitch of the grouping of pitchers we have, the 23, he's at like 19 or 20. Um, overall, he's 68 okay. in the top cool. 100. And he's a guy who a lot of prospectors have shooting up. He's a hard throwing lefty. Gotcha. Uh, so I didn't say, I didn't say any secondary stuff. Up. I can imagine that he could have a really good a slider just based on, you know, you generally see that from sidewinding guys and it can be really tough to pick that up properly. And I tried um, to get stuff like that with him, but uh, that, he's in the lower levels. So as you could tell, probably by the fastballs, you know, motion on the camera, it's kind of hard to pick up sometimes when the ball's right. Moved. Oh, yeah, exactly. And it's so. also, yeah, we're not getting, you know, it's minor league stuff and they don't have the camera always behind them or stuff. So mm -hmm. it can be tough. All right. We got someone Number next three. here. Oh yeah, we're doing this. We got 23 to go here, so we're we're cruising. <laughs> All right, big guy. Whoa, okay. I uh, weird. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I don't know what happened with so, the camera there. Yeah, well, no, it, it was so big, but he like lost control in the second half of the windup. Like he's falling. He, okay, so he's someone who reminds me a little bit of, of Chris Stavinsky, um, without the extreme of it. But what he's doing is he's um, sitting down towards the first base. I always kind of see this a lot where like essentially you're getting your bottom half, but you sit like a squat almost. And then that, that pulls your whole body towards it. Now he's not totally opening up like Chris Davinsky does. Looks like he's getting a splitter grip in there, by the way. Um, all right, good. And I get another look at this curveball. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, he's not... Um, I don't know. It, 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 there's something about his mechanics that doesn't feel to me like he's getting all of it every pitch. Like it's not as smooth. It's not as like there's a lot of wasted energy here that's making me think that he's not spectacular. Let's see. What's the next one? That's a nice slider down and away. That's good. Um, do we have another fastball? Can, is, was there one of those that was a fastball that I missed before? Maybe the second pitch? All right, so I can see that he is a decent command guy. Like, it doesn't surprise me that he is. He stays somewhat straight. The squatting thing is a little bit weird, and I think he's not maximizing his uh, his potential. Um, with that, at the same time, like, it's keeping him straight. Arm action is over the top for the good amount. That allows him to get that good slider and a big curveball. Um, not someone that I'd be totally sold on. Uh, I don't think that he has super overpowering stuff um but it's but i mean this is good this is this this is fine not someone that i would break the bank for in dynasty do you have any idea who this might be no okay that's what, <laughs> make, that's what makes this hilarious on so many fronts to me was like matt manning or something what's well, casey mize first <laughs> of all. <laughs> so one it's casey mize and two I, I almost lost it when you said that it may not be spectacular because I took this video from a no hitter. <laughs> no way. That is awesome. That is awesome. So like I, I'm I'm gonna keep going. So play this curveball again. So uh, this curveball that um this one face throwing is very uh like that is a kind of I don't it's fine. It's like that's not a, a magical curveball to me. Because um, magical pitches is cutter. Okay, so that was the slider that we saw. Yeah, that was a, that was a really good slider. Yeah, that's his pitch. But no, that's okay. Casey Mize. He's the uh, number two pitching prospect. Cool. Uh, and he is number seven overall in MLB Pipeline's top one hundred. And uh, you're making a lot of Tiger fans very sad right now. <laughs> I mean, I hope to be wrong there. Like I, to 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 finish that one there. Uh, I'm so happy you took away the names. Um, <laughs> and especially he didn't have Mize on the back of him. Um. <laughs> The uh, the main takeaway there is if that cutter is that legit, like I saw one and that was beautiful. Um, if it's always that good, I can understand it being a strikeout pitch and great. Maybe that curveball is like the third one. That's all it needs to be, and that's great. I saw one heater in there, and he did go straight to the glove of it. If that's always what he is, I understand that hype a bit. Um, it does surprise me though that uh, given like how he's throwing the ball, it doesn't. He didn't come across to me as like an electric heater. It didn't, you know, and. I don't know if that is going to get him burned or not. That's well, my biggest concern. You're just making Tiger fans sad. That's all I'm going to say. We can I don't know. I, I, don't, I, mean, I just saw one at bat. 
<laughs> That's all. I saw four pitches. Yeah. Okay. Can we just talk about this? I meant to mention this before, but in this one at bat type uh, small sample size thing, I do want to point out to the people that in the 2019 Futures game, you've made the bold proclamation that you like DL Hall over Mackenzie Gore. Uh, yes. Yes. Awesome. We have that on podcast audio. Yeah, I, recording. I, yes, I do. Throwing that out there. Uh, I did. Well, now obviously <laughs> DL Hall is on the has is on the uh, on the sidelines with uh, with Tommy John, which is unfortunate, but <laughs> so it goes. All right, we'll move on here. This is our what fourth pitcher? Yeah. Oh yeah, the All first right, pitch. So number twenty one. No idea who this is. Okay, cool. Okay, so he's falling off a bit to the side. Um, it looked like it was a changeup that they got on the side of. Um, would have liked to have seen him, of course, come over the top of it properly and come down and through it. Looks like it's heater away. All right. This is, I mean, I could see it working. Um, I don't like the fact that, again, he's falling to the left. And it didn't seem like the, you know, super electric heater. But that was a good spot in the outside corner. Yes. I mean, this is one at bat I'm seeing. This guy could be much better, but he's falling off way too often to the left. And that generally just speaks to inconsistency. I mean, that pitch right there was just bounced. I think it was trying to do a secondary offering. Uh, I don't even know what it was. Okay, here comes a curveball. That's filthy, though. That's a really, really good curveball. Oh, man, that's all. God, this is all right. <laughs> That was quick. If you want to watch that again, we can. But um, I want to see. Oh yeah, I want to see the first two pitches again. I think I want. I want to see that. I think it was a changeup. That was away. I want to see if I can get the call for it. Um, I wish we saw that character. first pitch in the at bat, but they had the angle on the batter. Right? How dare they? No one cares about the hitters. So let's see here. No, that looked like a heater actually. Um, I don't. I don't like the fact that he's not getting on top of this. Totally. You know, he's not. Uh, going down and through and then able to spot it better. Cause this is, I mean, every single time he throws his entire body is, is falling over um, and it brings down his arm angle, uh, which is not ideal. Um, especially preaching consistent. So this is the, um, this is the bounced one. Um, I think he's trying to throw a slider or something. Yeah. I definitely think it's a breaker, but it just went, maybe right that was a change up. I think I swung through that. Yeah. He swung through it. Let me see if we can back it up and see. What Minor leaguers. Huh. See what okay. the catcher's calling here. So, um, so with that curveball, I mean, that's an exciting pitch. It, the question is, of course, I imagine him having a, a pretty high walk rate just because we can see him this at bat. I mean, he barely executed what he wanted to do. Yeah, it looks like it was a changeup. That was a wiggle. Um, but I, I mean, the, the, I guess the second pitch, the fastball, or the third one rather, because we missed the very first one. Right. Was the fastball we wanted to, but it still wasn't the thing we wanted. And then, okay, what's yeah, this, this is the, curve is the breaker. He's, he's trying to bring it in a bit, I think. Or sorry, rather away and got a sword. And he and oh, it's filthy. I mean, if you're trying to do that, that's one thing. I don't know if he was actually trying to put it exactly in that spot. So it gives me some concern. Um, I would imagine on the picture list of half ah, funny, uh the, the 20, like the 23 videos you have here, I would put him, I would say he's probably in the middle. So like 10, 11. He is bottom three. Bottom three, okay. Yes. yes, this is uh, he is number eighty-eight on MLB Pipeline. This is uh, one of your Yankees. This is Clark Schmidt. Ah, okay, sure. Yep, Clark Schmidt. I so I should have gotten that. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering answer. if you would. Yeah. Okay. I mean, just because I, I wonder if you see the trend and be like, "Oh, it's a Yankee." As we move on here, this is n number five. I'm starting to see a pattern here with these numbers. That uh, we've gone from from a Brady to a Casey to Clark <laughs> to Braylon. So, okay, we have a lefty who is falling to the right. Man, everyone's falling, guys. Just go straight. Mize, Mize was best at that. Mize was best at, at, at landing straight. Okay, that was much better, that heater that got up and in. Oh, man, I got... I kind of like the body language of this guy. I know that's not really anything that we should hold on to, but I love the fact that he pitches is like, all right, cool. Give me the next one. I want it now. I feel good. <laughs> Something that I uh, hear a scout say, but I, uh, yeah, it reflects highly. I don't know. There's something about it. So 
So he, okay. I'm like, uh, the more I watch him, the more I'm liking him a little bit more with his ability to, to drive effectively towards the plate. That was a good heater as well. He's not fully side, but he's not fully over the top two. Um, I imagine he's got a super good slider now. I love the fact that he's going up and in as well. Oh, is that all I get? Is that it? I think that's all you get. Oh, okay. All right. We'll go I back. I don't have <laughs> a more or anything. Oh, no, wait. I got, a, I got something else. Oh, this is the same guy, isn't it? No, it's the same. I, I, I just did this. I thought I tried to get you a breaking ball. No, 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 it's all good. But I like this guy. Okay. I, I mean, it's on the pretense of if he has a really good secondary pitch, I'm in because I think his ability to go inside confidently and I think his mechanics are good enough to be consistent enough. I, uh, and it looks like he's throwing good heat as well. Um, I like him. I, I know it's not Mackenzie Gore. <laughs> because not, he's, uh, I know Mackenzie Gore is a stupid windup. <laughs> process of elimination. It is not. You're correct. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I would put him. Yeah, I would say he's he's in the top half of pitching prospects. He is below Brady Singer, directly below Brady Singer. Okay, so he's like 17. So he is 61. Um, out of the top 100, and it is actually Brady Singer's organization mate, Daniel Lynch. Oh, Daniel Lynch. Oh, yeah. I see the hype now. I get it. Oh, he has. So yeah, he was throwing upper 90s, if I remember, right? I believe so. Yeah. He's so, so what is, so what else would I know about Daniel Lynch? Um, I mean, he's just one of the, oh, God, I get the trio there confused so much, but uh, he does have a good breaker. I think, I think you're right. I believe it is a slider. Um, again, I thought I got you one, but I must not have. That's so, okay. Yeah, uh, no, you know, I, I, obviously, Alex Fast actually got to talk to him at first pitch Arizona um, for the Fall Stars game. I understand the hype now. <laughs> I get this. I'm in on Daniel Lynch. I like him. <laughs> See, I'm in on two lefties now, D.L. Hall. <laughs> D.L. Hall and Daniel, Daniel Lynch. Lynch. I'm noticing a pattern. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. We got a new guy now, lefty. Hey, it's D.L. Hall. It's <laughs> <laughs> D.L. Hall. <laughs> <laughs> oh right okay so what i like about dl hall is i mean it's a super hard heater and a really good breaker from what i saw in the, in the uh and you can see how straight he is on it like he finishes and it's straight he's not falling off to the mound he just executed one for a strike like it's beautiful i um, i was shocked to find out later that he had a 15 percent plus walk rate but uh i feel that it's <laughs> is that something it? <laughs> that you can fix like i mean that time he fell off more so there is something to be said, like on the breaking ball, he's doing something different that keeps him straighter. And maybe there's something that he can tweak to make sure that happens. I almost didn't put DL Hall in here just because I knew you'd recognize him right away. So but, I, thought, I mean, oh, it's, it's it's talk about it more. I think DL Hall um, is definitely something we'll hear in like two years when he's back in Tommy John, maybe even dealt when he has Tommy John now. Um, but I, I mean, I'm, yeah, I think he's, I think he's super interesting. You like him a lot. He's not even the best pitching prospect in his organization. That's according um, to multiple lists. Right. That would be uh, Grayson. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> maybe we'll get him later. I don't know. <laughs> I, I literally don't know. Actually. <laughs> well, you have a whole other minute to enjoy DL Hall here if you'd like to. <laughs> oh, sweet. Yeah. Um. I mean, if you want to skip it in between uh, the the pitch stuff. But yeah. I mean, so we got a fastball way coming. Um, he's going straight to it. He goes, okay, so I can see now, right? So he fell off so far there. And because he fell off, that means he opened his shoulders too quickly, which means that his arm wasn't far enough around. Um, so he essentially was, it was too early for his arm. And that made sure that it was, it was too far back in the arm circle and went up. Executed a slider, it looks like, but didn't get it down enough. Same problem. He's got to stay straight through. He's got to stay closed for longer. Um, then he can actually execute it and get a strike. Because that's the thing. When he throws strikes, he's so good. Looks so like we got a wiggle slider? here. Nope. Curveball? Well, now slider I don't know. Again, fastball away? What does he want? Fastball in? <laughs> what do you want? He's indecisive. That's got to that's go against him. This is the worst. Okay, I'm so sorry for everybody listening on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're watching a catcher put down his, his fingers. Um, there's a slider. Away. Very subtle oh, slider. slider. That's going to be a very effective pitch, especially if you can do that one. That's a beautiful that was, one. That was, that was beautifully located. Yeah. So I, I, that's the thing is like I focus more so, and I think everyone else listening for fantasy purposes, um, 
it's about the ceiling to me and less about the floor when it comes to far prospects. I think that's a pretty much understood thing in the dynasty world. You can tell me better than I can, but I, uh, as long as they have a certain ceiling, then, I mean, then you're just going to wind up with a Toby or so. I'm uh, the wrong guy to talk to you. Cause I'm all ceiling. Like <laughs> I, will, yeah, that's I, not, yeah. I will sell my floor guys just to get one guy who could be better than all of them, but could also never see the light of day. Well, right. That's what you, I mean. <laughs> I feel the same way about it. So I don't really care unless they can blow me away because also, I mean, especially for redraft leagues, when it comes to prospect stuff, like so many guys are going to struggle at first. You meet Jose Barrios had like a six or seven year or whatever. And now he's, you know, a top 25 starter or top 30, um, maybe top 35, whatever. It's fine. It doesn't matter, but it's, he's actually a consistent pitcher now because of the ceiling eventually that he reached. Right. So um, there's some guys that are going to struggle in that first year a lot. And unless they have amazing stuff to get past it, um, then you're just not going to care. So, I uh, so let's all right. Let's see this next guy, number seven of twenty three. Yes, and this I think you'll know who this is after a while. I think. Oh man, I mean, my head is just going like, okay, who starts with an E or an F or a G? <laughs> uh, okay, love this already. Love it. That was a change of going straight down, downward plane all the way through. Fantastic. And he's facing Jared Kelenic, who's a legit hitting prospect. That's a name I've heard. <laughs> Exactly. So that's my point. Okay. So he starts from the stretch, which is good. It's telling me, yeah, this is going to be a consistent thing. Oh man, I love this guy. I love this guy. <laughs> I figured you would. Everybody does. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll save my comments till the end. <laughs> so I mean, so great change of fastball change up already. Does he have a secondary pitch or a curveball? Okay, that looks like a change to be on a little bit on the side of. But I, uh, he's a flat brim guy. I don't know. I don't know if I like him. <laughs> <laughs> but i uh, so i mean again the things that i love the most he's staying straight it preaches consistency it's good downward motion so that he gets good on his changeup. it does oh that's great that's a really good pitch too then honestly you, you can do whole tunneling stuff really just go up and down with heaters doing this stuff um yeah i'm i'm in here i mean show me show me like a slider or a curveball please one two now Put him away. You got a first pitch change that he was swinging at. You just swung at the bottom of the zone with the heater. Now is exactly when you'd go to breaking ball down. Looks like he did another fastball. Like I fouled it off into his ankle. Poor guy. Yeah, he's got a while. You know, to... It's hard to be in the main minors, you know. You deal with and, stuff. And uh, okay, I tried not to get you anything without a breaking ball, so there should be one coming. Not to. You're the best. You're the best, Trevor. Oh man, that hurts. That yeah, hurts. that's not good. But he's. Hurt. Oh, he's so back up. He just he just needed a minute. He's back up to the plate. Good job, good job, Jared. All right, let's see the pitch here. Fastball. Is this Grayson Rodriguez, by the way? No, no, it is not. Okay. Well, all right. I'm just thinking G. <laughs> <laughs> is there an F? Is there another D guy? I I should have I should have mixed those up beforehand. I didn't think about it. I mean, I'm not gonna get it anyway. There's only like <laughs> two other pitchers I know. Oh, there's the curveball for a strike. Oh my god! We'll get you another look at the curveball. I am so in one it. Of them. That's a really good hook, and he also spotted it perfectly at the bottom of the zone here. Ah, oh, yes, 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 yes. He said, "There's a good hook for you guys listening on the podcast." He plays for the Corpus Christi Hooks. This is Forrest Whitley. This is Forrest Whitley. This is Forrest Whitley. He oh, is yeah. uh, he is a top five in terms of guys who haven't reached the majors yet. I can't remember if there's anybody above him, but top five pitching prospect. He's 19 overall. His stock has fallen a ton. I mean, he was supposed to be the next stud, when, uh, but a, a bad year is, is he dropped. So. When was this video? This would have been uh, probably in August of last year. Because I, I, I remember, actually, I did get to watch him before. Um, yeah. what surprised me about this guy that I'm watching now is command. And he did not have command when I saw him in the spring of 2019. And that's what kind of has been hurting his stock. But this is Forrest Whitley. I figured you'd like him because pure stuff. He is amazing. I don't um, think that he was pitching from the stretch. Maybe he was in, in spring training. Well, he had a down year and then he kind of reclaimed some stuff um, during the Arizona Fall League too. I saw a video of him at the AFL and it was, he was on ridiculous it's just now if, especially if you're in, talking in terms of dynasty you're trying to make a choice of you know should i keep him should i sell him because somebody will buy his upside but right right i mean right. he's got all the talent in the world absolutely 
fascinating. <laughs> All right, oh, next man. up. That totally that one at bat, which is again small <laughs> sample size, completely changes how I feel about force. <laughs> you want to talk about a small sample size? This guy, we get less than a minute of video on. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> okay, so a little bit worse because it's again, it's it's a little bit side angle of like a, a release point. Um, but he was able to hit it consistently. I'm so, I'm curious if yeah, that's a good execution there. Um, but he is pulling off a little. And again, I mean, if, if you heard anything from the past, like I guess 30 minutes, I don't like guys that pull off. I love to see mechanics straight through. Um, anytime you can just watch a guy and see him falling to the left a lot um, before release. That's the important part too. Not on release, uh, before release. Not much better on that last fastball, 95 up. Hey, I actually have mile per hour on this. This is great. <laughs> um but I, uh, but if you see it before release, like you see his whole body, like his shoulder or left side or whatever, right side, depending on the glove side, whatever that is, open up too fast. Yeah, much better. Staying through on that one. Um, oh, that's all I get. Okay, uh, hard to see the depth properly because we're like really low on the camera angle. It's the first time you've mentioned camera angle though, so that's pretty impressive. Um, gone yeah. this far. I mean, I didn't want to just complain about it from the <laughs> beginning, but yeah. <laughs> uh, coming in ninety three, ninety five. Um. It's good. I I can't really tell how good those breaking pitches are. I can't even tell if that's a slider or a changeup just because we're so off center. I want to say it's a slider, but it doesn't really have the aggressive bite that I would want. But maybe it does, and I just can't tell. <laughs> well, this is Grayson Rodriguez. Okay. Yep. I this is for DL Hall. This <laughs> You're just going to get a t-shirt that says that. I mean, uh, I, is... it's, I'll tell you, it's really simple why. I mean, I understand Grayson Rodriguez. I don't think that Grayson has the electric upside. Like, I mean, from watching this, it's fine. You know, the, I mean, the two secondary pitches that I see, like mm -hmm. out with one, like it's just slower to me. It looked like it was like, all right, not bad. Um, I don't see, again, I've only seen two pitches from this guy. I haven't <laughs> seen, like, if he has a third pitch, it's actually filthy. If maybe those are just two maybe weaker secondary ones. He's only 93, 95. He's not going, like, 97 or something. For, like, a redraft league, it's for someone that you, you're showing up to, like, really dominate now. Um, and it doesn't, I mean, like, it's it, his mechanics are working for him now. It might not always. Uh, I'm not I'm not totally 100% in. I, I would prefer DL Hall's electricity more. Uh, there, so he's kind of uh, what almost what middle of the road, be like a household name one day, and like that, <laughs> he's kind of middle of the road. He's 36 on MLB Pipeline and okay. on his jersey number, too. I was so, about to say, he doesn't look like a 36 year old, but now I understand. 36 year old, what he's well, not, he said he's 36. I didn't, <laughs> he's 36 on MLB Pipeline's top 100, and he's wearing 36, but he's not 36 years old. I want to point that out to anybody who might not yeah, have of heard of him before, 21 or something. But yeah, not a ton there. But yeah, that's that's Grayson Rodriguez. First time also that Nick has complained about the camera. Overall, how have the camera angles been? They've so. been much better than I expected. Okay, so this next one is from the 2018 Futures game. Oh, nice. Okay, so I actually, I couldn't get anything else. So you're going to get a lot of picture in picture because they decided that's to interview fine. David Ortiz right. during it. Whoa. Okay. Green. I don't. I, I know there is a prospect named Green. And yeah, Tim. Right now. <laughs> We just saw a curveball for a strike. He extremely fell off to the left side, but I didn't really get a look at the at his motion beforehand. It's actually okay. So pause it for a second. Um, one thing that I really want to make sure is understood is it's, again, okay to fall off to the left as long as, or fall off to glove side, as long as everything stays straight from plant to delivery. Oftentimes the, um, the torque of uh, uh on release can pull you off um if there's a big difference between staying straight in delivery and then that torque pulling you as opposed to flying out early pulling you um that looked okay even though he did still fall off to the left that's all right um he was able to stay straight through the release so it's okay just want to clarify that that was another big breaker i like his breaking ball he sure does too um See, I don't know anything about Green though, as far as rankings or whatever, or even what team he's on. So, <laughs> all right, I'm just waiting for Ortiz to disappear, and I realize it's probably not going to happen. Okay, no, fine. this is a whole interview, a whole inning. Whole, I tried, I tried again. I want to apologize to everyone that is not listening to this or just listening, that's not seeing the video. 
whoa okay so that's that probably was a situation where he uh he flew open too soon um as he went up and in and hit the guy i guess it was urius um with 100 miles per hour yeah. that's not ideal that's not what you want and now we have i guess the coaches cam so all right um I would invest in this guy a little bit more than others just because it's a big breaking ball in a hundred mile per hour. Now there's a chance mm. this becomes a reliever, which I'm sure many have said because it's wild. Um, and I understand that from the mechanics uh, a little bit, but this is, this is something that you want to take that chance more. And I would imagine because if there could be some sort of tweak that makes it more of a like 97 as opposed to a hundred, not to mention this is the futures game and imagine he's a little bit ramping it up for that one inning of work. Um, Especially uh, since in this video, he's roughly 19 years old. Yeah. So uh, wow. Um, I would imagine he's not at the very top because of these tendencies. And it's, I imagine it's two pitches as opposed to three. I don't know why I'd say that, but that's all I saw. So I'm going to go with the middle, maybe on like the, like the front, the top end of the middle. You're right. Um, he's I, in terms of where he is in this grouping. I don't really know anymore. I've lost count, but he's 53 overall on right. MLB pipeline. Uh, he's a guy who's fallen a bit recently. He was kind of a top 25 guy. This is Hunter Green, by the way. Okay. Hunter Green. Um, he's in the Reds organization. He's a guy that I'm preaching a lot whenever people ask me who I, who I like that you could you know, buy mm -hmm. or whatever. Cause because of his, he just got TJ. He just got Tommy John. So he's kind of down people to down on. He plays in the Reds organization. So I'm in on the fact that one, he has that fastball and that breaking ball. And two, he's got driveline now. Um, you right. know, the driveline guys have, have joined that uh, Reds right, organization. Right, right, right. So Not to like, make, there, there's something to be said about getting Tommy John. We talked to James and Tyone and he was saying, you have to relearn your mechanics. And I, in some ways might benefit him. Yeah, so that's Hunter Green. He was like a number two or three overall pick to the Reds that year behind like Royce Lewis and um Wow. And so I mean, yeah, yeah, he was on that hard and with a big breaker already. So yeah, and, and he was a two way guy too. So when you saw him there, he was actually still a two way guy at like nineteen years old out of high school. I mean, he was, uh he's not a two way guy anymore. He's just a pitcher, but he didn't pitch this past season because of right. Tommy John. So that's why I didn't have any video except for twenty eighteen. Um, gotcha. So I'm really excited about this one. Because you know who this is already? Yeah, um, because I see Anderson on the back. <laughs> That's Ian Anderson. I've been waiting to hear about it, uh, see more about Ian Anderson, and I already love it. <laughs> so what I like right now is that he's a trebuchet kind of guy, where you can see you can pause it actually during the delivery if you want, where his glove comes up. Oh well, thanks camera angle. <laughs> okay, that's fine, I guess. But you can see that yeah, his yeah, glove yeah. comes up and he's going like this, as opposed to like the guys that go like that. So by doing this, um, oh man, I'm sweating. Ooh, okay. Anyway, uh, uh, right, beautiful. So you can see now that he is going super north south. Like this, this entire motion, you can even see his leg going straight forward. Um, he's not opening that those that shoulder too far quite yet. Um, what this does dictate is that he is going to be north south a lot more than the other guys. I don't like the fact actually in this pause right now that he hasn't. He's not going out as far as I think he can. Um, he might actually benefit a little bit from pushing out a little bit farther. Because you can see his, his back foot isn't totally sprung open um, as he's about to... Uh, I mean, he's in the process of opening it as his foot is about to land. And I feel like he, gets, he can get a little bit farther. He's not really... Ex you know, he's not taking a huge, huge stride. But yeah, let's keep going. Mm, that's a good pitch. I love it. I love it. All right, so off of that, you normally see um, it's it's why you hear scouts say, okay, arm action dictates certain pitches. Generally, generally, we see that kind of over the top stuff. You can get a slider change up combination. Um, actually, more so of a curveball than a slider, I should say. Slider wouldn't be as vicious, I think, from straight over the top. There's definitely a breaking ball here somewhere. So another heater. He's. Staying up a lot, and this is actually something you generally do see. Glass Doctor RX, sorry. <laughs> uh, they just give us an, a weird advertisement. Um, like, think of Glass now here, uh, who had a bit of this as well. Uh, there it is. Ooh, that's a vicious breaking ball. Nice. I love it. Okay. Um, is that it can be, like Tyler Glass now talks about how he just naturally finds the top of the zone. Because he... Uh, because he has this trebuchet motion, it's, it takes longer for him to get down and out. 
uh, from it, which is good in this environment. Um, oh, come on up, throw him a better ball. <laughs> <laughs> um but uh, but yeah I'm, I'm definitely a fan of ian anderson right now um and also if you compare it to like the other guys in the braves organization you have bryce wilson you have cal Wright, you have two Tucson. all of those have i mean bryce wilson a little bit less so but command issues and i don't think that anderson uh, would have it as harshly yeah i think he's i mean I, I, i'm in i'm in here He's one of the least favorite that I that I've watched, to be honest with you. Oh, really? Why is that? I mean, every, the thing is, uh, um, I just the other guys. It seems like they have. I know you said he has a vicious drop on his breaking ball, but the, he's just he never uses it um, in a lot of situations. Because I watched a lot more than just this when I took this video, and he just wouldn't. He's just very fastball heavy, and I, I just I just didn't like that sequencing. And you know, mechanically, I, all the things you say, I agree with, and I, I don't mind that. But it just seems like he kind of lives up and is afraid of that breaker a lot. Where that's some of the other guys that I'm watching, they'll they're they'll release it. I mean, they're just right. good with it. That's a that's a great point. Um, I wonder uh, what velocity that was for Ian Anderson. Um, I imagine it's like 95. That's my guess. I think it's about where he sits. That sounds right to me. Okay. Um. So that that's good. I. Uh, I imagine when you're when you're talking about that stuff, that can change to me. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. That's easily changeable. But I just in terms of right now, what I have in front of me, that's kind of where I sat with him because I'm a huge sequencing guy. <laughs> uh, I gotcha. Yeah. So so I, I figure like he goes to the majors, and it's kind of like how the Reds were like, okay, Luis Castillo throw that change up more, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden he did, and they they brought him up actually throwing that more than this breaking ball, right? Like I feel like that stuff can can be fixed by major league stuff. And then it's just about like, if that's a good fast one, you're going up with it. That's a good recipe for success. So Ian Anderson is number 37. Yep. That's the right. pipeline stop 100 right behind Grayson Rodriguez. Who's your favorite. So <laughs> move on here to the next pitcher. All right. We're up to number 11. Looks like it's someone from the Dodgers. It is. Okay, so that's that's not the best breaking ball I've seen. Um, it seemed a little floaty. It's an OO breaking ball. Yeah, that is a good point. But it didn't have the the massive bite that we've seen from other ones. I mean, we've seen curveballs for a strike, for example, that have been much better. But it was a strike, and that's an important thing. Ooh, that's fast. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't i couldn't really get a good glimpse of his mechanics unfortunately because there is a guy in base and they said you know what you want to see the guy in first base like, no i don't i never do i never care about the lead so that was fast cha 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 <laughs> sorry i want to do it once <laughs> every every podcast right um doing first base again <laughs> oh it's not doing this no okay so i i'm i'm in i'm in on this guy I, uh, that wasn't, so, I mean, when I did get there, I was just, I only watched the mechanics. I didn't even watch the pitch there. Um, not falling off, going straight through it pretty effectively. Um, obvious heat. Now I'm just curious to see if, oh, he's got a mustache. Uh, I <laughs> love it. <laughs> um, the important things. <laughs> uh, I want to see if he's able to get the, the, the secondary pitch down now. I mean, he's going in with a fastball. I can't complain about that. Um, talk, tell me who this guy is. This is Josiah Gray. Oh, Josiah Gray. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've heard that name before. He was in the, uh, he was, he was drafted by the Reds. He was in the, oh, it was the big trade a while back between the Reds and the Dodgers. For Puig? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that was, they had, uh, the Dodgers got like Matt Kemp or somebody and just released him. Right. I think that's so. Real. Oh yeah, so that's the, that's a slider again, which I think I mean it stunned him and it had a little bit better break from the first one. It didn't get it down. I'm, I think he wanted to get that one down. Yeah, uh, Gray is right in between Daniel Lynch and Braylon Marquez at number sixty-seven out of the top one hundred. Oh, that's interesting. I would have thought he would be a little bit. I mean, I like Daniel Lynch a lot, though. <laughs> See, I, I would have like Daniel Lynch and Josiah Gray maybe higher than Grayson Rodriguez. Maybe. Like, I, I, here's the thing: I understand that Grayson Rodriguez is probably more ready for the game. As far as who I'd invest in, I mean, then again, being a Dodger, it's just like, I don't know. 
<laughs> and I, I want to see if I didn't get to see a third pitch there. If he has a third offering too, then I, I'm definitely in on Josiah Gray because I looked above 95. That looked like 98. I mean, in terms of real baseball, the Dodgers do very well with their prospects. In terms of True. fantasy baseball, the Dodgers do terribly with their prospects. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. Coming up next, number 12 now. Yes, who's also number 12, the jersey. This is a guy I like a lot. Huh. So, super lanky guy. Um, it's funny. Mechanics, I'll pause the video for a second. The mechan- mechanics are always the. Uh, it's all about hitting certain, uh, um, r- like on the roadmap, hitting certain cities or whatever, certain points in it. Like you can do all these crazy things, but as long as you consistently get, you know, your arm down with the ball or like, you know, you pull it back or whatever. Um, and then you get the glove out and then you turn the back foot and you get your foot down and you get your arm up. Like as long as you hit those points in time, everything else is just like your process to get your timing correct. So some guys need like a super long one. Some guys need a quicker one, et cetera. And he's got all this funky stuff, but you see that he actually gets to every point um, along the way effectively. So Jake, yeah, you can play it, but um, that might be something to watch as you're, as you look at him. Yeah. Cause he, I like it. Um, that, was, that was a nice slow breaking ball. I like the fact that he has a glove spot and, and as he comes up, he's holding it there and then the arm leaks out and he's not going until that arm is there. Um, and then he's preparing uh, for delivery. So, liking it so far. I love this guy. So, he's a little cross body. Um, I can't see directly if he is um, stepping towards the base or not. Because I can see that his arm angle is coming down and then pulling across. Yeah, he is definitely, t- I think, stepping towards. Uh, not definitely, I should say definitely. But it does <laughs> look to me like he is stepping towards third. Um, so what, what do you like about him, Trevor? Uh, a lot of the things you mentioned, like, you know, he hits the point. I like that breaking ball. Uh, it looks like he hides the ball really well with that, with that letting his arm leak out. Um, which is another thing I liked and very you nice know, slider there. Very yeah. Nice. So he's just, he's got good stuff. I also, you know, in this at bat, at least he's facing Lauris Montero, who I also like. So the fact that he did well, <laughs> uh, bodes well, but, uh, can, um, can you play him again? I want to see the first pitch again. So, I mean, he struck him out on a, on a front door slider frozen, which was pretty nice. Yeah, he's got a little cut action, it looked like, on the on the heater, which doesn't surprise me because he is coming a little bit. He's not going straight over the top of the ball, and then it's a little on the side, and generally on the side, that's how you get cut action. And here's that slow curveball. He slows down his mechanics for that, uh, which, uh, which I don't like, but... And that might not be as effective in the majors, but... Yeah, I like this guy. I li- I think he is definitely someone uh, like an extension guy as well. He's getting out on release, which is is excellent. Here's that slider, I think. Yeah, I like them. I like him a lot too. Yeah. Good fastball, good slider, and a curveball. I think that's going to work as the third pitch. So where would you? Where do you think he is? Oh no! Like my whole reference. Let's just let's just make this um, easy. Instead of doing among the pitchers, just maybe in the top 100. Where do you think he would be? Um, I would say he's probably around the seventies. He is number 38. Nice. Good, good, good. good. I, I thought he'd be lower just because he doesn't have like the, the, the over the top, um, electricity. And I would think some people would be turned away by the mechanics, but I think it's, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm going to do it based on my own. Like I would put him here. <laughs> I'm going to do that. Um, yeah. So we have that he ends a run of three straight pitchers of Grayson Rodriguez, Ian Anderson, and that is Logan Gilbert. Oh, that's Logan Gilbert. That's Logan Gilbert. What team is that? Mariners. I absolutely. Oh, oh I have him in my Autono League because y'all told me to get him at the very last pick. <laughs> that's right. We did. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, man. Oh, I'm like glad you like him then. That's, uh, that's <laughs> interesting. So, okay, oh, we're, how far into, how far is he into, uh, into like, is he double A, triple A right now? That was double A, yeah. So he, he finished last year in double A. Okay, so he's going to be in triple A this year. Okay. Oh, he was going to be. Right. There's no minor league. That, that, that is the None. absolute best part of doing this is how excited you get when you no. <laughs> suddenly recognize a name. <laughs> this guy, you'll absolutely know this guy. If you don't, I'll be upset with you. Oh, no. 
well, then you're going to be upset with me. <laughs> um, I don't. Oh, this is is this. Oh, this is going to be Patino. It is. Yes. Luis Patino. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm so in. So like, I, I love this. Mechanics are going straight towards it. That fastball was just like boom, straight. Like you see a, a lot of these electric guys, like Sixto Sanchez, falling off a lot, and there's a lot of like overexertion. Patino, this is smoother than you'd think. Oh, yeah. So good. Okay, so now, so the first pitch was a slider, I think. I remember seeing in the Futures game, too. It was just a complete wipeout pitch. He throws, like, upper 90s. Yeah, he's really good. What's his first name? Luis? Luis Patino. Luis, Luis sorry, yeah. Luis, yep. yeah. There's the breaking boys. Gotta get that down. Get that down. And my favorite part about Patino, at least in this... Um, specific video is that the numbers on his back are abnormally large. Huh. Is that right? It has nothing to do with baseball, but it's, <laughs> like, it, it's notably large if you haven't seen it yet. Oh yeah, they are. <laughs> wow. They take up like the whole back. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a lot. Like I get it. I get it, man. You're two six. Um, so yeah, Patino, I mean, it's, it's in control. Like his whole his whole mechanics, everything is in he, he, he yeah, it's in control. Looks like we're getting a fastball on the outside. That works. It's an out. Beautiful. Yeah, very in control electric so, stuff. Uh, yeah, I would have him. I would have him top twenty prospect. He is twenty seven. Okay. In between two guys we haven't seen yet, so I will not mention any of them. And yeah, Singer was in the fifties, right? Uh, singer was 59. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Move on to number 14 here. Well, this one's easy. Oh, it's yeah, gory, and I'm gonna recognize it anyway. Yeah. So, so, so I was talking about before with um, with Logan, with Logan Gilbert, was the steps along the way of getting there. Gore gets it, but it's rougher. Like the transitions are rougher. It's it's there's no like moment of he's not giving himself any time to get the timing back if he loses it. It's all fast, fast. It's all there's no like it's not like a pendulum swing. It's like bam, 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 bam. You know, it's uh it, it's it's too much. I like that pendulum metaphor. He does have he does have a, actually he does have a small stop at the at, when his hand is um with the ball down. He does have that moment, at least. His leg does kind of act as a pendulum during his delivery. True. Yeah, I'm not. I don't, I'm not a fan of this. Like, and he's also not throwing sp specifically hard either. I mean, it's I 93. Yeah. Like, I can. I understand baseball liking him. Like I can see this guy being a consistent starter. You know, there's a changeup. I imagine he just missed. Um, like in in real life baseball, okay, cool. He can be like a number three, number four, or something like that. But I mean, I want someone that can, ex you know, be like an ace. And I don't, I don't see him just being that overpowering, legit ace. Like yeah, that's my intention every year. Real life baseball. This is your legit ace. I just that's him. That was a nice changeup, by the way. So yeah. there, that's it, McKenzie Gore. I mean, I get you're not a fan. Maybe you will be is when he when he reaches the majors and you can see him more. Maybe, I mean, maybe, maybe that's right. I he's mean, maybe very impressive to really watch. Good. Like his sequencing is good and everything like that. Then maybe that's maybe that's why I'm not because he's got legit plus pitches across the board. I mean, he is he okay. is fantastic. Um, you said yeah, I think you might just need to watch. I think a full start, not just. Yeah, that sounds about right. Player. I mean, I need to. Uh, like I've, I saw that change up. Very good change up. Mm -hmm. uh, fastball was good, but wasn't. I mean, I'm surprised that's like plus. I mean, I guess command wise it is because I was like 93, 94. Like it's not the the heaters that we've seen already. Well, this is already going. Didn't mean for that to happen. That's really good, though. I like the start of that windup. <laughs> like the start of that windup. As we move on to the next guy, you see the starters wind up again. You liked it so much. Okay, so it stuttered a lot, but man, I like this. Oh, I think I recognize this guy. Who do you think it is? Manning. 
That is Matt Manning. Yeah, I like this. I'm, I like this a lot. I I do wonder about the heater. Oh, that's such a good curveball. It's such a good curveball. And also, we get this wonderful camera angle right now. Very blessed. Um, so we're one for 14 on camera angles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I assume it's going to be a heater away here. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's so good. That's just like you can see it. Everything is going towards that target. And he set, he's on the far left of the rubber to make it easier for him to, to command everything. Because that means his arm on release is then the center of the zone. I mean, he hit his spot. That's what he wanted to do, and he got an out. Like, you don't need to see much I, I, I think he should be top 10. He should be top 10. Matt Manning is just above Patino at 24. Really? Yeah, but he and Mize, I mean, uh, they, I am so excited for them in Detroit. And, um, I mean, a lot of people say he's above Mize. And I, that's I would. the feeling he's been getting. Um, the reason Mize usually is ranked higher is because Mize has a higher floor. And when you draft these guys in the first round, um, that would be Mize in 2018 and Manning would have been 2017 uh, first rounder. Mm -hmm. um, Manning was a high schooler with, you, you know, he's got to put it together and he right. – has in a big way and that's why he's made this climb whereas you're getting Mize first overall you know he's this polished product from auburn um and being what he is so matt uh, matt manning has always been kind of shooting for the ceiling whereas Mize, you can kind of see the floor so that's yeah. kind of where uh the ranking differentials come in but i'm honestly on the crew that would put matt manning above casey Mize in most i think i think yeah. the i think the command like the consistency of M manning's delivery and everything just looks better to me so but that is Matt Manning for you right there. This is this is such fun with small samples, guys. This is the best. <laughs> this is so I mean, I almost want to just pull random guys and and put them. Yeah, up like, oh, he's amazing. Like, like no one yeah. cares about him. Yeah. yeah, just put him up against top prospects. See if you can tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who we got here? Um, actually, I don't know. Don't tell me. All right, <clears throat> bad camera angles again. Great, awesome, lefty too. Oh boy, it's kind of a darker screen. I'm okay, to so. Out. Initial idea here is I kind of like this. A little bit, reminds me a bit of Paxton, um, of the of the camera of the well, sorry not the angle but the the uh, the delivery. Um, he is pushing out a good amount. He is falling a bit to his right on it, but um, I mean if he is a command like if you know, the numbers say that he is better at command here, that's a really nice slider. Um. I could see this being, uh, yeah, I, I like this. I uh, show me a good heater here. Like hit hit the spot. Okay, that's a really good curve. That's a really nice slider. Um, I'm curious what the numbers say about this guy. If this is a sub 10 percent walk guy, I'm definitely in. Um, like I, I see him more as uh, less of a strikeout guy. Yes, the slider is going to work, but does seem to me like he is going to be a guy that's going to get you know some strikeouts but not really more so of just nailing the the heaters on, on the edges and then playing the sliders off of it so if your yankees just traded for this guy how would you feel <laughs> fine i feel fine <laughs> who is well, he this is matthew libertor uh, oh libertor yeah sure sure yeah so he was just traded to the cardinals not the yankees okay. um so he's he's uh this is I mean, he's still with the Rays at this point, um, but yeah, I know he was his deal. just trade. Yeah, he was just traded. So what you like about him, obviously, is the breaking pitch. Um, but what you're not seeing in this at bat, which I wish I could have found one where it, you put it all together, is change his changeup. Um, that's really good. Now, yes. Yeah. So when when I was um, researching him as soon as he got traded, his his you know you like his fastball enough. His breaking pitch obviously is great. I think his changeup has a chance to be his best pitch. So hmm. um, as that develops, I think he's got three really good pitches, and that kind of gives him a nice mid-rotation, um, probably ceiling, but not too far off his floor even. Uh, but I like Libertor a lot. So Libertor in the minors, as far as like walk rates go, for example, what have we seen so far? Oh, that I don't remember off the okay. top of my head. But, I mean, it, it isn't something that is extreme one way or the other, then. No, I don't think yeah, so. Okay. That's a good. That's good. I, I mean – Again, not as a, like for dynasty purposes, I could see him being um, a guy on the Cardinals specifically who 
is solid. Like a Toby, but better, slightly better, you know? So the question is, esque kind of thing. Where do you think he is on the top 100? I wouldn't say too high. I would, I would say probably around the 70s. 58. Not too bad. Okay, yeah. Oh, he's ahead of Singer? <laughs> he's ahead of Singer, yeah. Yep. Singer is just like the one, like, nah, get out of here. <laughs> he's also he ahead of really Lynch. Yeah. He's also ahead of Lynch and DL Hall. I think Lynch is going to be higher than him. Oh, no. Lynch is, Lynch is 61. Lynch is below Singer, so he's a few spots behind him. And DL Hall's going to, yeah. I think if he had a full season this year, I feel like Lynch would be running up the board. All right, next, ready for this next guy? <laughs> this is like, oh, I'm an expert at this now. Clearly, guys, this is. <laughs> oh, I think you'll like this one. All right, who we got? Whoa, what? <laughs> he's doing the he's he's doing the Andrew Miller. He's just falling essentially. See this again? Yeah. Oh, it's a slide step. He's gotten first. Okay. I thought there was, I thought it was no one on base. All right, fine. So it looks like the first pitch was a changeup. That was a heater. Um, you can actually play that pitch again. I was focusing more on the mechanics. Okay. Uh, not bad. I mean, this isn't nearly enough yet. <laughs> Yeah, I have nothing to play off of. Okay, here we go. We trade slider away. Oh, that is nice. Tight pitch. So this is interesting. I don't I'm not so far, I'm not as like enamored. But it, this it looks polished. To be able to do a slide step like that effectively and be able to go he's going straight to the target well. Yeah, that's nice. It's very nice. Um, so, I mean, again, small sample, I would love to see full wind up and kind of see where everything is at heaters moving a bit more. I mean, we didn't get really good look at it because the guy was on base and the stupid, Hey, what's the first baseman doing? <laughs> or they got first base doing, which is so stupid. Um, I would say this guy is probably in the forties. Awesome. I'm so glad you feel that way. This is Nate Pearson. Oh, <laughs> Love. Okay, so I saw Nate Pearson in the Futures game, and he was throwing the upper 90s. I couldn't tell that he was throwing upper 90s. That's so Nate, That's Nate Pearson right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm in. I'm very much in. Very much in. That's why the entire time you were talking, man, I'm just like, this is going to be fantastic. Because you and I have talked about Nate Pearson before. Yeah. I know you love Nate Pearson. Yes. yes. Well, I mean, I was wondering also what the full windup would look like. Seeing a guy, I got to say, seeing a guy with a slide step, and that staying that straight and effective with one generally to me dictates is full windup is good because it, it takes a special kind of pitcher, I think, to be able to execute slide steps effectively. Uh, I, mean, so, I mean, he's super polished, like you said. Yeah, I mean, that, was, that was spot right on. Off the edge. So he, yeah, Nate Pearson, number eight in MLB's top 100, yeah. MLB pipeline's top 100. Like he's, I, I understand that completely. Yeah. yeah. I, I just knew that I could unravel everything you were going to say just by telling you who it is. And I was very excited about it. <laughs> um, I would, okay. So Nate Pearson, relative to the other guys that we've been talking about, I mean, to me so far, there's, I mean, my favorite ones are Patino that I've seen. Um, I liked Gilbert. I, I liked Manning. Uh, Daniel Lynch. Um, I mean, yeah, Pearson is again. I'm basing this also off of watching him in the 2019 Futures game, and that was just oof, that was very good. So again, if, if there's a consistency with this. It's about guys that aren't falling over as much. Hunter Green was nice, but, <laughs> but I think there's still going to be some rawness to them. If you own him, he's going to come up and maybe not be there. But we'll see what happens when he comes up for time, John. All right, let's go to the next one. 18. Next one. This guy is tough to get some video on. I'm not going to lie to you. So enjoy this. I'm so happy you're honest. You know, this was some this of the only ones effort. I could find. All right. Lolo. Not even mm -hmm. close. Well, a little close. Ludlow. Ludolo. Ludolo. Thank you. I just, it's hard to see the D. Yeah, okay. I, uh, that was a nice heater to start. And there's 50 50 pots up to 2,500 too. Oh, so I'm so glad to hear it. <laughs> okay. So he's got some, he's, he's got a long arm circle. He's a lanky guy. Um, he kind of looks like Zach Gallon. I, uh, but so he's, he's going to be sidewinding a bit. 
And that pitch that we just saw, um, it's too bad we can get a better look at that slider because it looked like it fell to the table. Um, I mean, it definitely crossed saw, the plate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is a good indication of kind of what we'll see, I think, where east-west is going to be hard to get down. That was a nice, that was a nice breaker. Yeah. I mean, oh, this, uh, this is hard because uh, on one hand, I understand him missing that heater because of how he's throwing a big cross body and more of like the hip torque. So let's go to that one again. Yeah. The, uh, the second pitch. The, so the breaker. The one. Yeah. No, the O one pitch that he threw. The one that he missed. So you're going to see that he's going to, he's trying to go inside here. And his whole, and he, he doesn't quite, you know, he opens his shoulders a bit too early a bit and he comes across and he's, because he's low too, he didn't get that timing quite right. And that to me is, a, is an interesting indication of concern when it comes to his command. Um, yeah, I, I got another good look at that. That's a, that's a really good pitch. So I would say that he's in the 60s or 50s. 48. Yeah, okay. He was uh he was drafted this year actually that's why it was kind of hard to get video on him. Um, this is Nick Lodolo from the Reds. Cool. Um, so, so that's so right. So it, it's a little bit of, we don't know right now if he's going to get better with that or not. That's my guess. Yeah, and he's kind of one that uh, you know he probably one of the better pitchers in the class. Um, he's supposed to be the premier lefty from this draft class. Hmm. But other than that, I don't know a whole t- whole lot about him other than what you know you just saw and what you just said. Oh, you got this one from 1984. <laughs> this is this is the video Shelly got us. <laughs> oh, seriously? Oh, you're awesome. Yeah. Shelley. Thanks for that. And she's got it in gift form though, so you don't have to wait in between pitches. So oh wow. Better. So um, so this he is pitching crossbody a lot, like he's stepping towards first, and then turning open. Um, hard. Oh man. <laughs> When they go from behind the plate, you go from 1980s to yeah, right to <laughs> like, now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's see here. This is a reliever to me. This isn't a starter. I think. I mean, that, those are two good pitches. Looks like there were sinkers that came back over the plate. Um. The reason I'm saying. Uh, reliever, I feel that the way he's pitching is not going to be conducive to consistent location. So I'm too cross body. It's a little too rushed. Slinging it a little bit. I don't like this one. Not a guy I know too much about. This is Seth Corey. Um, so where do you think he is on the top 100? I would probably say the 80s. 99. Yes. 99 in the top 100. <sighs> Seth Corey. That feels good. Just got to say. <laughs> Score one for the home team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I know who this one is. This is a guy that I, I think is consistently think, rated I too think, low. I think I know I, who this is. It's who you think it is. Absolutely. Who do you think okay, it is? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the Spencer Howard. All right. Never mind. You're completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> seriously? Yes. Seriously. Oh, man. Like, just even the way he's standing there, I would imagine it's like, the guy that goes north south very well, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I actually know this one because I think I, I saw him live. You did, Shane Baz. There you go. <laughs> well, I thought you had it at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, that's a good slider. So I remember being wowed when I was um, at the a- at uh, the Fall Stars game, right behind home plate, watching him. Um, it doesn't surprise me that he just bounced that one too far. He, I. Uh, his command is it's it, I think it's, it has to do with timing of his shoulder a bit. Um, like he, he's not quite there of staying strong all the way through and then coming across a little bit with his arm. I, uh, from my understanding, he only has two pitches. Also that slider is so good. He throws like a 91 and yeah, it's electric. Like he throws stupid heart. Yeah. He's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. He's one of my favorites on this list. It, it's funny. You can kind of see a guy. Like, you, you tell me that this guy's a pitching prospect and he looks like this to start. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, okay, I get it. Because like, I can just tell that this guy is going to be 
like calmer, right? It's a, it's a pretty calm delivery, like Syndergaard almost. Like a tall, but like stocky bottom righty. Like you, I just instantly know like, okay, he's gonna, not going to do much. He's not going to do a lot of, not a lot of herky jerky. But even then it's, it's smooth, but it's almost whenever I watch him, I always see a, almost a coil. Cause he's going to come and he, he, you know, he's fairly straight up. He's a little turned, and then the end he uncoils. The end is what he does is like with his yeah. head almost. He like pulls mm -hmm. with his with his, sh his shoulder right at the last minute like that, and it's yeah. Like don't do that. Just ah, you don't need to exert so much. So uh, I, I, mean, I know you've seen Baz quite a bit, so we need to watch a ton of this. I just like watching him, so I oh, just yeah. restarted it. So where do you think he is in the top one hundred? I would say the thirties. I'm glad you feel that way. He's number 90, but I agree with you. <laughs> uh, it might be because they see him as a reliever and he hasn't gotten a third pitch yet. Yeah, that's kind of the question on him, but I, I love Baz. I think he should be higher than 90 at least, but that's that's where he sits in the MLB Top 100. Like, again, MLB Top 100, I imagine, like, the favoring Brady Singer, because, yeah, he'll probably be a Toby or maybe slightly better, you know? And yeah. I, I get that because that's for baseball purposes. Like, that will help a, a baseball team, not necessarily as much of your fantasy impact. So I, yeah, so I get it. I understand why he's in the nineties. Cause like, Oh, well he's a raw reliever or something at the moment, but he's just so much fun to watch. Yeah. we got three of these left, Nick. Oh man. Uh, I know. I'm oh yeah. So oh, I've been waiting for this one. <laughs> All right. Who is it? How much do you know about six though? I don't know his ranking. I imagine he's a top 10, top 15 though. In the top 100. Yeah. He's not. He's number 22. Let's watch. Really? Oh, I love Sixto. I love his hair. I mean, he uh, he does fall over a decent amount more that I've been talking about this entire time. You're pulling out towards the left and coming a little bit on the side. But man, I love it. I, he, he, he's okay because like you watch him pitch and he doesn't um, it, it doesn't get wild as much as you would think. Like, ah, he's so good. And now it's going to be that stupid good slider. It has to be right now. And it's going to be done. Because it's six, though. I mean, he's built... The way he's built is ridiculous. He's built like a linebacker, almost. Yep, there it is. Oh, but he does fall off a lot. I mean, his lower yep. half, I think, is, is what's so built, is what makes him so... Right. Besides his hair, obviously. <laughs> you say that to Carlos Martinez, though. I mean, he tries to do more with it. Oh man, I mean, you want to say he's falling over, but he's not. He's staying back. Over, well, it's the torque over his going up a lot more. But I mean, yeah. I say he isn't. His arm isn't straight over. It is. Mm -hmm. It is going across like that. And he works so yeah. fast too. That's what I love. Another exactly. thing I like about him, he works fast. Whew. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Sixto. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he comes up relatively quickly. Yeah, he should. I mean, he, I figured he would be up this year. He's playing for Jacksonville here. That's Triple A, so he's right there. Uh, obviously, for the Marlins, for for Sixto in the uh, Marlins in the Real Muto deal. I hope <clears throat> Jacksonville's Triple A because I said that without thinking. Um, but I'm pretty. <laughs> sure. I have no idea, so I hope I, you I'm pretty sure it is. But hey, who knows? I could be completely wrong as your prospect guy. But that speaks more to your hiring ability, I think, than it does about me. So here we go. <laughs> Here we go with our next guy. We only got two more. This is just All right, me. just because I've, I figured out the whole alphabetical thing, and this has to be Spencer Howard. This is Spencer Howard. Okay. I don't actually, I've, I don't think I've seen him at all. So I'm excited. I very much enjoy Spencer Howard, but I know nothing else about him except for one pitch that he has. Oh my Lord, that was beautiful. Look at this great camera angle. We can actually see that he's straight to it. But I mean, this is a guy who's probably in the majors this year if, if, we had started. Yeah, this is actually a guy that could even make it in a shortened season. So he's okay. He's throwing. Um, I want to see where he starts the mound because he is lining up with the third base side by the end. Mm -hmm. um, it, okay. He's actually not as much as I thought throwing cross body. So two excellently ex executed uh, heaters to start there. Fastball up. It looks like pulled it a little bit too much because yeah, he is, he's pulling like it's a lower arm angle. So he's pulling a little bit, but it's good. I'm glad he didn't get him there because I want to see his other pitches. <laughs> oh, I very much want to see uh, a secondary pitch. El Camio, give it to me. Change up. Oh, so good. I love his change up. 
See, that was a, that was a bit of an interesting one. That was a side one. I, I expected it to be a little bit more of a of a drop as opposed to a uh, horizontal bend. Like, I feel like if I had a drop there, that would have been them. Going fast I don't know if, here, no. 97. I don't know if he's got a breaking pitch. I don't know what it looks like. I know he has that changeup, and that changeup is so beautiful. This is why I like Spencer Howard. Is that is that? Uh, I mean, if he goes back to a changeup now, it works. It did, yeah, beautiful. See, that's that's what I was expecting the first time. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some of the mechanics there that made him get on the side of that one as opposed to stay on top of it. But that last one was really nice. Uh, yeah, I'm very much in on Spencer Howard. Absolutely, it's almost like he just threw it, you know, arm side and just kind of got out to the side of it, which is what made it right. So, but when he exactly. got over the middle, it, it had the whole time. I would say he's top twenty. Uh, Spencer Howard, 34. Really? 34. Really? Yeah. Like Grayson Rodriguez is in there? He's two in front of Grayson Rodriguez. Oh, and he is, oh God, I hate math, seven behind Luis Patino. Okay, I get that. Yeah. So, all right, we have one left. We're going to do a quick review at the end of this. Um, this is a, one of my favorites, a crowd pleaser, if you will. Except mm -hmm. the on, the only thing here is that I could not find a video where they weren't continually cutting to this like event that they had going on. That was a very nice secondary pitch. I think that was a slider. So they have this Nolan Rhino here, and he is just going to continue to reappear doing that. Oh no! <laughs> so I I gave you several at bats of this just because they continually go to Nolan Rhino. <laughs> okay, that's a very nice breaking ball. He is um, falling off a bit with these mechanics, but. It's okay. We executed well. I don't. Oh my god. I don't care, dude. He's like shooting silly string. Okay. Uh, so it broke up a little bit there on the delivery on my end, uh, but another good breaking ball I could tell. Can, uh, I haven't gotten a fastball yet. I don't think. Back. We'll see if it breaks up less. We can see the silly string again too. Wonderful. I'm so happy. Oh yeah, there, there it is. Nice, excellent plan on it. Um. All right, let's see. I have it. not seen a fastball yet, though. Lots of breaking balls. So you see why I like this guy. <laughs> yeah. Early and often with that. Right? I mean, I'm just curious where, how his fastball looks. Good. I mean, I'll let you see for yourself, but... <laughs> I thought you were just happy that I wanted to see. <laughs> if you're asking me, it's good. Do <laughs> you have any idea who this is yet? No. That's solid. That, that, I like that. Uh, oh, wait. I know a name. Now, I don't know if that's a hitter or a pitcher, so I'm just not going to say anything. Oh, that's yeah. a really nice heater. Okay, so you actually see. Play that back. Play that last heater back. Uh, one Look more. A little more. A little more. Yeah. Look how straight he is. He doesn't fall over. He actually fell over to the left, but on the breaking stuff, he falls over, which suggests to me that he's changing his arm angle a little bit. But to see him that straight on a heater, love it. Love it. Right? You see how he's not, it's like he's not crossing over his right leg mm -hmm. on a breaking ball, uh, or a straight pitch. Now I imagine, or a straight pitch, a fastball. <laughs> now I imagine. <laughs> Pitcher list, see, everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> imagine now you're going to see a breaking ball and you're going to see him fall over. Nah, well, he did fall over on that one and he missed. Right, and I think you might have gotten a, straight, yeah. much better. I think you might have gotten a breaking ball later in the at bat, but I figured at that point you'd yeah, see no, what you need yeah. to see. If you want to go back to the early breaking balls, you can see it, but you just saw him fall over. It's fine. We don't need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, he stays so, true in that one, and that was a really good one. Uh -huh. So, uh, who? What's the name you have in your head? I, I, there's a guy named Tyler, uh, Taylor Trammell or something. I don't know what the Taylor time. Taylor Trammell. Yeah. Outfielder for the uh, Padres, just traded from the Reds. Right. So this is not him. <laughs> okay, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, I'm trying to think of all uh, pitchers' prospects that are a T or later. <laughs> Would organization help you at all? Probably not, but why not? Okay, he's playing on the Erie Seawolves, which is double A for the Tigers. He's the, there's a third? There's a third. It's a three-headed dragon. There's, a, there's another Skywalker? Okay, before um, I, you know, before we go name here, where would you put this guy in the top 100? Yeah, yeah, um, good call. I, I would probably go. 
I would say fifties or sixties. It's our it's our last guy. I want an exact number. I want you to th- think through and see if you can throw a dart and get it. Fifty-two. Forty-six, not bad. Forty-six. <laughs> All right. Hey, um, this I'm just guy, trying to have some fun here, Nick. <laughs> uh, I love it. I uh, this guy's name is um is Travis. No. <laughs> if you're guessing generic first names, you will not ever approach this. <laughs> Fair enough. What's his name? Tariq Scooball. Oh, this is Scooball. Yes. Oh, right. 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 <laughs> How hard was that heater? Does it say on it? Um, Cause he's supposed to be a hard throwing guy. I don't think we get, yeah. I don't think we get miles per hour, but he is a hard throwing guy. He's got a nice breaking pitch. And what, what's hard to tell with this angle is that he creates such a hard like angle for the hitter when yeah. he throws. Um, if if you see it, you know, but uh, he, he's got a really good angle to make it tough for hitters to kind of, you know, get down that plane. So he's, <laughs> I, I well, love Scooball. <laughs> so Scooball has had like a 40% strikeout rate or something, right? Something stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can we, can we play him again? Can we play the first at bat again? The stupid rhino and everything. <laughs> You're kind of wishing he was new Kalush here and he would just hit the rhino, huh? Yeah. That is really okay. That is vicious because I, I was expecting it to be more of the like the big hump pitch and that just mm-hmm. dropped. I, I, I know I can skip through Nolan Rhino, but I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a really, really amazing breaking ball. I get it now. Man, okay. Okay, wow. Wow. So and he has a 46. And so they have he is 46. And they keep Boyd and Turnbull works out and Fulmer's there. This could be something in two years. You just need hitters. They have, well, they're about to have two hitters in the top 100. Right now they have one hitter in the top 100. Uh, so they have Riley Green in the top 100. Mm-hmm. They have uh, Isaac Paradis, who's borderline top 100, depending on who you oh, talk Justin's to. Cousin. What? Justin's cousin. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, he's borderline top 100 hitter. And then you have whoever they get, either Austin Martin or Spencer Torkelson gotcha. in this year's draft. But yeah, no, they have pitching between those three. And not not even mentioned there is they have a guy who I liken to Dallas Keuchel. His name's Joey Wentz. He just got, well, he just got Tommy John this year too. But um, you know, he's a lefty who's going to be a back end guy too if they need him. So he, they've right. got some pitching. Interesting. I. Uh, Wow, this is fascinating. Uh, <laughs> this so, is right, that. I went through all twenty-three and and showed how embarrassing I am, uh, or how much I'm embarrassed by myself now. I <laughs> can you go through and tell me just the list of from like one to twenty-three of their ranking on the pipeline? Mackenzie Gore is at five. Okay. Casey Mize is at seven. Okay. <laughs> Nate Pearson now is I, at eight. Not even close to my top two guys, by the way. <laughs> Nate Pearson is eight. Yes, good. For- Forrest Whitley is 19. I get it. Sixto Sanchez is 22. Yep. Matt Manning is 24. Sure, yeah. Luis Patino is 27. Cool. Spencer Howard, 34. Yeah. The, okay, so so far right now, like everyone you just mentioned, I might have above uh, Mackenzie Gore. <laughs> Love awesome. it. Forrest Whitley, I'm still like worried about because of the command stuff. I mean, this is all from me watching one a bat or so. <laughs> And obviously numbers tell this amazing tale of like their consistency with command and stuff like that too. So right. I'm just like from this brief, brief look. Yeah. That's hilarious to me. Also Grayson yeah. Rodriguez at 36, Ian yeah. Anderson, 37, Love him. Um, Logan Gilbert is 38. Yep. More uh, exciting to me. Very, very volatile. Like, but I'm, I'm wondering how that pans out. I love Logan Gilbert. Uh, Scooball 46. Yep. Nick Lodolo is 48. Um, Hunter Green. Lodolo. I'm curious about that. What'd you say? I want to see more of Lodolo. So do I. Uh, Hunter Green is 53. Sure. Um, Libertor is 58. Libertor. Matthew Libertor. Your boy Brady Singer is 59. Which one uh, was Libertor? Libertor was the one who had just gotten traded. You liked his breaking ball. I told you that his, his uh, changeup might be his best pitch. We didn't get to see one. Oh, though. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yo, he's, he's the lefty. Yeah. The lefty. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, so 59 is Brady Singer, your boy. Um, 
<laughs> six. Funny, for how much I've heard about Singer, I'm surprised that he's like I, I, I thought he'd be higher up just because I keep hearing him instead of like Lever Le or other guys. You know what? In the 2019 Futures game, when when it was over, you had missed Singer's outing. And I said, I think you'd like Singer. And you go, I do not like Singer at all. <laughs> yeah, I went to, I, I watched it after. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I like him. I, th- I like the quick, uh, I think it's unique. I like the quick delivery. I, he's got, I think he gets really nice arm side run on the fastball. I, I like Singer. What I, um, want, I don't want arm but, side, but I want quick mechanics. But based on what you've been saying, um, you know, once you said at the beginning where you like the ceiling guy, then it makes sense that you wouldn't like Singer. Singer's more of a floor guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I get see that. How it connects. Uh, so uh, <laughs> next, next we have uh, Daniel Lynch at sixty-one. Yeah, I like um, him. Yeah, and they have another guy who's outside the top one hundred, um, whose name's escaping me, but I like him a lot more than I think I like those two. Uh, Josiah Gray's at sixty-seven. Sure. Yeah. Braylon Marquez is sixty-nine. He's Braylon, the oh, he was the second one we saw. Yeah. Yep. Uh, D.L. Hall is sixty-nine. Yeah, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, it's funny because now doing this in retrospect and hearing all the names and stuff, I understand why DL Hall is that low. I just, I am surprised that Grayson, Grayson's the one that's like sticking out as like a sore thumb to me. I, I mean, Grayson, you're getting, go back getting, and getting uh, maybe I can, you know, feel that again, but we'll keep going through the end of this. Yeah. I mean, Grayson, we had a short, uh, a short video on him, but he's, right. you know, he's a big body dude. You can like him. Uh, Clark Schmidt at 88, mm-hmm. Shane Baz at 90. Man. Yeah. Okay. And Seth Corey at 99. And so, then, so for me, the worst one that I saw probably was Clark Schmidt. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think he was falling off too far on the side. Wasn't like super filthy. Um, I, yeah. I think I'd agree with you. And then the guys that we didn't get to, just in case you've heard names, uh, Edward Cabrera, uh, Jordan Balazovich, uh, uh, Simeon Woods Richardson. You could be making George, all this up. I wouldn't <laughs> George Kirby. Um, Brent Honeywell, I'm sure you've heard of him. Oh, yes, yes, Brent, yes. And uh, uh, your boy, your Yankee, Devi Garcia. Oh, well, I was really, I was impressed with him a bit in the 2019 Futures game. So was I. He was good. But th- so those are the top 100 guys that haven't made the majors. Obviously, you have your AJ Pucks and your, you know, Lizardos, Dusty right, Mays, right, you know, right. those guys. But uh, but there you have it. This was fun. I, <laughs> I loved this. We've been, we've been looking forward to this for a long time. <laughs> uh, and I mean, I think like I, I was obviously super repetitive of like, oh, he's falling off this guy. I don't like him or I like him when he's straight. But I mean, that's a huge part of just understanding consistency. So um, what you, would you think overall the camera angles? If you could give yeah. the camera angles a grade. It could be much better. <laughs> um, this one was good, by the way. This last one was very mm-hmm. good. Just went to the rhino too much. Can we go back to, uh, um, I want to see Braylon um, and Grayson. So number two, yeah, Braylon Marquez. And and Grayson would be the next one, just really quickly. If I remember, Braylon's actually facing Bryce Terang, who's a, a borderline top 100 prospect as well. As so I mean, I, I'm just with everything else in in mind here. Um, I understand. Like, I like where, where was where was Braylon ranked? Uh, Braylon Marquez, 68, right sounds, above DL Hall. Sounds exactly right to me because I can see him like he's a power lefty. And I don't, you know, I want to see more of his stuff. And he's a guy gaining a ton of helium right now, too. I uh, I do wonder if, like, he's going to be a good enough of, of a command involved or not. But I don't know. I just, uh, good bottom half. Just, I want him to go out farther. That's, yeah, I mean, it. it's like a bolt straight to the glove. I, I can see this guy. Yeah, this this can be sweet. Okay, that was a good angle. It paused on me, um, but I can't roll it back because it paused. But you can actually kind of see how low he was um, when it broke up on my end. Yeah, that was the fastball that missed, right? <clears throat> that looked like it broke across the plate to me. Did it? This looks like a fastball that you just placed. Maybe, before. maybe. And then he's got to run to cover first. Pitchers are athletes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then uh, then Grayson. I want points that I can do this without their names being there. <laughs> yeah, you don't get it. <laughs> okay, I mean it, it, it's yeah, it's all fine. Like mm-hmm. that's a ninety-three mile per hour fastball. Fine, you know, 
but he's not like that pitch isn't going to fly necessarily for a long time. So that's just a slower version of it. Yeah, I need a better camera angle, I think, for him to really be against it. But Grayson was me for me just like, eh, I didn't see a good secondary pitch that was like, wow, or in this fastball wasn't electric. But um, this is that I mean, Mackenzie Gore one more time. Why not? I just love hearing you say bad things about him. So that way, when, he's, <laughs> when you like him later. So he's got that. He, right. spot. he just missed the spot. I mean, he does have that weird delivery, right? If you haven't seen it, his glove goes way above his head. He oh, yeah. kicks his legs straight up. Like it's weird, but again, and I don't think that we get too good of a look at his slider and his curveball, but you're talking about fastball slider curveball with command, potentially all plus pitches. So they said um, 89 there on that pitch. I don't know if that was a cutter. That was just a heater to me. My just watching it looked like it was a heater that he missed inside. Um, I mean, I think that's the point, though. So there's a heater away at 92. So, I mean, okay. My understanding is that, that Mackenzie Gore is a command freak. And he can move around the plate effectively. He has command of multiple pitches, and this is why he's so highly regarded, because he's essentially a major league pitcher already. But is he a number one like the other guys we've talked about, they all have stuff that can turn into 25 to 30% strikeout rates um, effectively in the majors. And with Gore, it like maybe, but I just want to add flame to this fire. So yeah, uh, on the 20 to 80 scale, I'm just pulled it up. He's got a, a 60 grade fastball, a 60 grade slider, a 60 grade control, 60 grade curveball, 60 grade changeup. So that's all that's of his tools are plus 65 that's overall. Nothing is like a 70. Well, that's ridiculous. A 70 grade tool is ridiculous. These guys don't have 70. The guys you're seeing do not have 70 grade stuff. None of them do? No. Well, some of them do. Like Marquez, I think it's an 80 grade on his fastball potentially, but I don't know the grade. But, but, you know, 60 is, is considered plus. So average is 50. So he's got, you know, he's got everything above there. So my question is like, is velocity the only thing that matters to that fastball grade? Um, no, your fastball can play up off your other stuff too, so that that helps. Obviously, his fastballs, but his fastball is ninety two to ninety six, and oh, uh, it, it six. It gets late life, according to the MLB pipeline. So, to save all the stuff they talked about, how he was drafted, uh, Gore's athleticism on the mound is obvious as the precious. I'm sorry, precocious lefty employs and consistently repeats intense high leg kick delivery before exploding towards the plate to generate huge extension over his front side. The extension gives Gore's 92 to 96 fastball carrying late uh, or carrying life that elicits late defensive swings for hitters on both sides of the plate. Uh, Gore's big mid 70s curveball, though still a plus pitch, has back uh, has backed up a bit in the wake of a blister issue, while his mid 80s slider has emerged as his go to. Uh, okay. It's at times his more consistent breaking ball. Gore's changeup is his least used offering, uh, though it projects as a plus as well, thrown in the late tumbling action in the low 80s. He throws each of his four pitches for strikes, posted uh, one of the minors' better swinging strike rates in his first uh, full healthy season. And then the last sentence on him in the bottom of the paragraph, um, such adjustments should come quickly for Gore given his competitiveness and overall aptitude on the mound. And what's that, once that's in place, there should be nothing stopping him from becoming a true number one starter. So interesting. <laughs> I mean, the, yeah, I think the best point in there was the extension that I think I overlooked. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that was okay, a lot of reading, but it just kind of gives you an idea of what other people are seeing and stuff. Right, right. Maybe that's it. Maybe, I mean, I mean, he was also throwing 89, 92 here. He's saying 92, 96 then. Uh, I might be missing that. So. And I mean, there, it's a minor league radar gun. We're hmm. top of the third here. So, I mean, I looked for something where I could get you. I, I, I would have sworn I got you breaking balls, but yeah, no, I think, oh, I think Gore's a guy where you're just going to need to see him. Yeah. I mean, a full, of, full capacity. So. Um, yeah, I generally don't. This is the first time I think I've ever really judged the minor leaguer, my minor leaguers before making it to the majors. And when they make it to the majors, is where I make the 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 actual assessment. But this was super helpful for me too. I mean, this now I have, I have this in my back pocket. Like, oh yeah, that guy that one random time that I <laughs> talked to Trevor Hooth and did this. So this was so much fun. Yeah, this was great. Um, yeah, if we want to do this another time, I mean, if you have another. 20 or so by all means i would love to do it again otherwise um trevor thank you so much for uh for doing this for me for setting this up this took 
a ton of work, I'm sure, uh, to find all these. So huge thanks again to Andy Patton and Shelly Burstray for putting that together. But Trevor, just uh, tell everybody uh, where they can find you on Twitter and uh, what kind of stuff you're working on. Yeah, I'm at Hooth Trevor on Twitter. Um, you know, I, I have a ton of bylines, a bunch of places, but the easiest way for you to get information is just to reach out or participate in Film Study Friday. I do every week where I try to go through some minor leaguers for people. So, um, yeah, I just this was a ton of fun. I hope we get to do this again in a different yeah. way. Like, I almost want to come back and do a top prospect or not top prospect game. Oh, my God. That would be awesome. I would love that. Um, that sounds great. Uh, but, yeah, thank you so much for joining, uh, joining me today, Trevor. And thanks to everybody for listening and watching this. Uh, we have some things this week. We have Pablo Lopez that we're interviewing tomorrow night. Uh, Fast and I are doing that. We can't wait for that. Uh, I'm doing a podcast uh, with Eric Cross uh, on Wednesday. Then I have the uh, the On the Corner podcast with Fast on Thursday, live stream 6 o'clock here on Twitch. And uh, we are going to be – huge reveal, essentially. Huge reveals happening. <laughs> uh, 6 o'clock. We cannot wait for that. And we are revealing it on the live stream. So Could definitely be exciting. But that's it, guys. So really, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Nick Pollock. I'll talk to you guys this week. See you guys.